Welcome to another tour. The vehicle we'll be showcasing in this video will be this 2016 Hyundai Genesis Coupe 3.8. This Genesis Coupe is finished in the Casablanca white exterior color. It does have smart key access. On the driver's door panel, you have a reflector, your power fuel cap and trunk releases, some storage, speaker for your sound system, and a tweeter. And right here, you've got all the power controls for your windows and mirrors. And it's got this really cool bronze-ish looking finish. This Genesis Coupe 3.8 comes with a two-tone gray interior with cloth and leather-appointed seats. And now that we're behind the wheel, let's go ahead and start the engine. Along with smart key access, it does have push button ignition, so just put your foot on the brake and then hit the button to start the engine. On the key fob, you have your lock, unlock, trunk release, and panic buttons. So just make sure the key fob is in the vehicle, like I just said, foot on the brake, and hit the button to start the engine. Nice potent V6. Before Genesis became the name of Hyundai's newly established premium luxury brand for 2017, Hyundai first used the Genesis nameplate for the 2009 model year as the name of a new rear-wheel drive-based full-size luxury sedan. The first generation lasted from 2009 to 2014, and the second gen came out for 2015. For 2017, following the introduction of the Genesis brand, the Genesis was no longer the Hyundai Genesis, but now the Genesis G80. The Genesis brand has since expanded its lineup with more all-new models like the G90 and G70, but that's not the focus of this video. Let's rewind back to 2010. The Hyundai Genesis sedan had been out for a year, and for 2010, Hyundai introduced a second model to its lineup using the Genesis nameplate for the US market in the form of the Genesis Coupe. As for the two-door Genesis Coupe, its underpinnings are derived from the first-generation Genesis sedan. However, it was made for a completely different purpose. While the Genesis sedan was made to be an elegant luxury car, the Genesis Coupe was built to be a fun rear-wheel drive sports coupe to compete with cars like the Nissan 370Z, being available right from the jump with a potent 300 plus horsepower V6 engine, which got even more power in later models. For 2016, both Genesis models were still branded as Hyundai's, but for 2017, as a result of Genesis becoming its own standalone brand, the Hyundai Genesis sedan became the Genesis G80. However, the Hyundai Genesis Coupe was discontinued altogether, meaning 2016 was the Genesis Coupe's final model year. As of 2020, the Genesis brand hasn't released a new Coupe model yet, but there has been talk of it. The Hyundai Genesis Coupe lasted a single generation from model years 2010 through 2016. It was initially offered with two engines, a 2.0-liter turbo 4 or a 3.8-liter V6. Its biggest update was for 2013 when it received a mid-cycle facelift that added updated front and rear fascias, as well as hefty power boosts to both engines and a new 8-speed automatic transmission. For 2015, the turbocharged inline-4 engine was dropped, so the 2015 and 2016 Genesis Coupes only come with the V6. The 2016 Hyundai Genesis Coupe is available in three different trim levels. There's the base 3.8 like we have here, as well as the more sport-tuned R-Spec and the range-topping Ultimate. 
two transmissions are available, one being a 6-speed manual and the other being an 8-speed automatic. The 3.8 and Ultimate can be had with either, while the R-Spec is only available with the manual. Competitors for the 2016 Genesis Coupe in 2016 include vehicles like the Nissan 370Z and the V6-powered variants of the Ford Mustang and Chevrolet Camaro. The Genesis Coupe is the only two-door coupe in Hyundai's 2016 model lineup. As for the instrument cluster, you do have two analog gauges, those being your speedometer and your tachometer, and then within them, you got your digital temperature and fuel gauges. And then in the center, you do have a digital information display. The steering wheel is of a three-spoke design, and it is leather-wrapped and multifunctional. You do have sport grips at 10 and 2. Here you've got some of your audio controls, volume, seek track, different modes, mute, voice commands, hands-free phone, on-hook, off-hook, and here you've got the controls for your cruise control. And on the back of the spokes, you do have paddle shifters to manually shift the transmission. The steering wheel is tilt and telescopic. Brightness adjustment, traction control, trip reset buttons for the information display in the gauge cluster. On this stock you have your exterior light controls. And on this one you have your wiper controls. Going down the center of the dashboard, you do have a color display corresponding to your radio. It is not a touchscreen actually, but we'll go over that in a bit. Preset buttons for the radio, your head unit itself, all your radio controls. As a CD player, Sirius XM and Bluetooth of course. You've got three auxiliary gauges your fuel consumption, torque that you're using, your oil temperature, you've got your passenger airbag indicator and your hazard light button, you've got the controls for your single zone automatic climate control, nice looking Genesis Coupe plaque, I'm a fan of that. Behind this cover you have a little bit of storage as well as an aux port, a USB port, and a power outlet. two cup holders. The vehicle's parking brake is hand operated. Got a center console with some storage. It also has a slot to put the key fob. And another power outlet. Both sun visors do have vanity mirrors, lights, and extensions. This mirror doesn't want to open, but as you can see, and as in most modern Hyundais and Kias, the way the light works, it, you could push it manually to turn it on or off, but it'll just turn off if you close the visor. On the overhead console, you have your overhead lighting and a sunglass holder. Finally, here's the display for the radio. Like I said, not a touch screen, but 
it is pretty nice to use. Um, for example, you go to setup and just twist the knob and it will select whichever one and then you push down for enter. Different radio sources. With that said, we'll go ahead and roll down the driver's window. Both of the windows are fully automatic. And we'll have a look at the engine. Forgot to mention earlier, but the windows are of course frameless. Standard on the Genesis Coupe 3.8 are these 18-inch, 5-split-spoke alloy rims. Powering the 2016 Genesis Coupe is Lambda 2, 3.8 liter, dual overhead cam, 24 valve, naturally aspirated V6 engine with direct injection, and dual continuously variable valve timing. It produces 348 horsepower at 6400 RPM and 295 pound-feet of torque at 5100 RPM. The engine in this particular Genesis Coupe 3.8 is paired to the optional Shiftronic 8-speed automatic transmission with manual shiftability, and the Genesis Coupe is rear-wheel drive. Premium unleaded fuel is recommended, and with a 17.2-gallon tank, fuel economy estimates are 16 mpg city and 25 mpg highway with the automatic transmission. It uses a McPherson strut front suspension and a multi-link rear setup. The Genesis Coupe uses four-wheel disc brakes, and the base 3.8 model only has ventilated front discs, while the R-Spec and Ultimate come with four-wheel ventilated discs. Her weight is about 3,500 pounds. Of course, I don't have much headroom back here, or legroom. I have to bend my neck down, but that's not what you buy the Genesis Coupe for. As you saw earlier, the fuel cap is on the driver's side. Dual exhaust. The trunk of the Genesis Coupe has a cargo volume of 10 cubic feet.
The rear seats also fold down. And that will conclude this tour of this 2016 Hyundai Genesis Coupe 3.8. Thanks for watching.